ProPlanner's drift analysis is a feature within the sequence planner and line balancing modules of Assembly Planner. Like with sequence planner and line balancing, we start a drift analysis by going to our future order build list and selecting the units that we wish to evaluate. Normally you would select an entire day or even weeks worth of work, but today we're just going to look at one order. We're going to exclude all of the orders in the future build list and just go to row 10 here and include that particular unit. We have the model and option of that unit so we know what the work content is each of the stations that we're now selecting. We're just going to go ahead and select all of the stations. You can see here in station number 160 uh, we have uh, only 12 minutes of work where most of the stations have over 60 minutes of work. There is actually a station 260 at the very end that's also I've got less than TAC, which is 43 minutes in this case, and is represented by the red line uh, that's going across all the bars there in the sequence planner view. In the drift view, which we've just pulled up, we have a Gantt chart in the top left, we have a drift chart in the top right, and we have our table of cycle times per station for each unit there in the bottom. In uh, Each of these screens can be maximized. The entire drift study can be maximized. Um, so and you can even rearrange where they are on the screen. You can also turn on and off the legends and access labels. In the Gantt chart right now, we're just looking at the amount of time it takes in each of the stations and just assuming that one of these times is directly after another. We're looking at the labor time uh, as though it occurred at one time. Now we're looking at the work schedule, which really shows how the work is broken up among three different days through this 42-minute cycle time through 26 stations. We can see, you can see on the left, you can see that you can select stations, you can select orders. So we can further filter this view to be exactly what we want. And then we can zoom and pan in the chart because sometimes these charts get very detailed and very large. Off on the right with the drift chart, what we're looking at here is we have our 42 minute tack time shown as a vertical bar. And then we see that as the cycle time exceeds 42 minutes, that we come out of a station late, that means we're going to go into the subsequent station late. So you can see how this lateness is stacking and that's why we have the gap there on the green bars there in the middle. Uh, eventually if our cycle times go below our tack time, uh, which in this case they will because they've just switched to 60 minutes, then we can see that we can catch up. But of course we're just looking at one unit. As we look at other units it, it could be a problem. Uh, here on the left in the Gantt chart, you can see that some of those Gantt charts now are becoming red. And what that basically means is that's a blocking condition. And with a blocking condition, the unit in the station ahead of this one is going to keep this unit from moving into that station. That's where the blocking comes from. So in summary, a drift analysis is really just a visual relationship of cycle time and tack time on an assembly line showing how units that may overcycle in one station can stack uh, in, in terms of delaying a unit through the line as well as delaying other units before and after it.